the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make wretched.
He's always aware of wherever I am and just what I need. And I've been through enough to know that He'll be enough for me. Puts my mind at ease And does take my very life He's gonna take care of me Because I've been through enough to know That He'll be enough There are walls made by man, built by frail and human hands, that an enemy can scale and get to you. But there is one protecting me from my greatest enemy. It's a wall that Satan can't break through. Sometimes a wall of grace, sometimes a wall of faith, other times it's sweet mercy that I need. But the one My brother, when I'm weak, would you stand instead for me and pray a fortress round me strong that can't be moved? And I promise you today, when I bow my knees to pray, I'll do my best to build a wall of prayer for you. Sometimes a wall of grace, sometimes a wall of faith, other times it's sweet mercy that I need. But the one need a wall of prayer surrounding me. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. But the one I need a wall of prayer surrounding me. I need a wall of prayer surrounding me.
once again today my self-determined will keeps tearing it apart but when the work's completed i'll have a servant's heart i want a servant's heart and I servant's heart More and more Lord I see there's a work that I must do Father may you find me faithful trusting only to start and I'll serve no other master with a servant's heart I want a servant's heart and I will gladly bear the markings of one held captive yet free Servant's heart. Bibles tonight. Turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Matthew, chapter 26. We're going to begin to read with verse number 20. We're still looking at basic Bible doctrine, but what we're looking at last week, if y'all recall, we talked on the the, the doctrine of water baptism, a believer's baptism. And uh, it's hard to, uh, to uh, have to teach on just believer's baptism without, uh, without getting on some of the other forms of, or the other form of baptism that the Bible teaches. And I know that in, in uh, Bible college that when we studied advanced Bible doctrine, uh, that uh, that you heard a lot about all the different baptisms in the Bible that's mentioned. I believe that Brother Jackson Smith said nine baptisms and and uh, and all of that. And I'm not here to to teach and to try to tell you that all of that. I'm talking about basic Bible doctrine for the church. And there's two baptisms. There's spiritual baptism and there's water baptism. Amen. And that's all there is. Now, I know that the Bible does say that, you know, when Moses led the, the children of Israel across the Red Sea, that's a type of, of, of baptism. It is, a, it is a type of baptism. They were uh, they, they, there. There's different things. There's a baptism of fire. Y'all know there's a baptism of fire? Y'all, and it's not a, yeah, there's a baptism of fire. Bible, just what Jesus said, matter of fact, he said that. But it's not what the false religionists say it is, and what other folks. It's not a, it's not a, 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 a some certain gift that you get. If you study the scripture, you'll find the baptism of fire is, is hellfire. That's not a baptism I got. I got to worry about. And I'm going to be taking part in. Uh, that's not something that I'm going to indulge in. And I thank God for that. Uh, so we could go and look at many different things. But this, what we're studying is basic Bible doctrine. We're not talking about advanced Bible doctrine. And, and I know a lot of people got locked jaw last week because I said that there was two baptisms. And I'm saying this week, there's two baptisms. So I'm still not changed on that. Amen. I'm still the same on that. 
and I'm uh, I'm not going any any further on that. I and 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 I'm not disagreeing with nobody. That's not what I'm here to do. And and uh, on the subject tonight that we're teaching on, uh, there's everybody don't see this thing the way I do. Everybody don't don't believe it the way I do. No, everybody don't don't believe it. I, I'm, we're teaching on on the doctrine of the Lord's Supper tonight, and. Uh, and everybody, not all the people I fellowship with, don't see this the way that I see it. They don't practice it the way I, I practice it. But that's their opinion. And that's their, that's their prerogative. I'm just trying to do what I believe that the Bible teaches. And I'm saying that, that they're probably trying to do what they believe the Bible teaches also. Uh, so that's the word it is. There's a lot of things we call that we have dividing lines on it. God said we ought not divide over we ought not split hairs about. Uh, you know, there's just some things it's, uh, that if you don't believe like I do, then, then it really don't matter. Now, if you, if you don't believe salvation comes about like I believe salvation comes about, uh, then me and you got a problem. And we can't, we can't walk together. We can't, we can't be agreed together there. So, uh, but there's a lot of things we can just look at and we can say, you know what? You've got your opinion. I've got me. And me and Brother Tim was... And I was telling Brother Michael in this last night. We were sitting on a, on Monday night of, of a meeting. And everybody that's been through Bible college know Brother Tim teaches and believes that John 20 there, that uh, somewhere around John 20 is where the church began. Uh, it was after that Jesus said, up, up on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall prevail against it. And that's where the, they, they teach it. And uh, we were discussing that. And... Uh, and he said he mentioned that, and I said, "Well, brother Tim, I don't agree with that." And uh, he said, "Oh, really?" I said, "Oh, really?" And I said, uh, "I believe that. Uh, I believe in the definition of church. I believe the church is what. I believe it started when the Lord done what the name ecclesia means. The word ecclesia means a called out assembly. That's what it means. When did the Lord? What did, when did the Lord call them out? He began to call out on the seashores of Galilee. So." There's where I believe the origin of the church is. Now, let me, let me tell you this. Does it make two cents? Well, all we know is there's a church, right? And what matters is there's a church. And uh, we, can have, we can have differences of opinions about that, and it really does not matter. There's folks that we can feel, there's folks that don't believe that, that you and me know, that don't believe that, that the church is going to be raptured before the tribulation. They really, they really don't. They, they believe that church is going through part of the tribulation. Yep. And, uh, and Brother Luther Collins, many of y'all don't remember him, but he taught me a lesson about that a long time ago. And he said uh, that them folks that got as many sticks to prop up their wagon with is what we do. Uh, you know, so I just leave it like that. I, uh, I believe, I got my conviction about Brother Michael. I'm looking for the Lord to come back. And I'm looking for him to take me before the great tribulation or the tribulation because the time of Jacob's trouble is a time for Jacob. God said he had not appointed us to wrath. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad of that. I'm thankful for it. Uh, but am I going to just say that's a heretic? Because no. He's not a heretic. We got differences of opinions. And, uh, but we just got to learn to get beyond that. Some things we can disagree on, Brother Michael, but there's some things we can't. Uh, tonight, what we're looking at, I don't, I don't know why I went through all that, but I did anyhow. Uh, tonight, we're looking at basic Bible doctrine, the doctrine of the Lord's Supper. Matthew chapter 26, we're going to begin to read with verse number 20, and read down through verse 25, Matthew chapter 26, and beginning to read with verse number 20. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you should betray me, shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written, as it is written of him, but woe unto the man to whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It hath been good for that man if he had not been born. 
And Judas, which betrayed him, answered him, said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. Now you say, what in the world are you reading that for the doctrine? You be seated. For the doctrine of the Lord's Supper for. Because we find him in the midst of the Passover. Now there's seven fat Passover feasts. Uh, there's, that's the reason a lot of folk get the feet washing mixed up is because they read the part where it said in supper being ended and Jesus not having or, uh, but, but Satan having put in the heart of Judas Isaacad uh, to betray him and they think that means that it's the Lord's Supper but it's not that's not even on the same night it's not the Lord's Supper that is a Passover Supper uh, that's taking place but you can go on and begin to read down there in verse number uh, uh, read on down verse number 26 and as they were eating the Bible said Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and gave to his disciples and said take eat this is my body. Now notice this, and as they were eating, that as they were eating, in the midst of this meal, the Lord begins to institute something. The Lord begins to put something into place, and he took the bread, and he broke it, or he blessed it, and broke it, and gave to the disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Uh, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. Now, what we find here is, uh, is the institution or the, uh, the, 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 the instituting of the second ordinance of the church. Now, the, the first ordinance is what? Baptism. Baptism. And is there an order to this thing? Amen. There is an order to it. You don't to partake of the Lord's Supper without proper baptism and, and being a, a faithful member of the New Testament church. So, that when you think about the Lord's Supper today, now let me say this, and, and I, we use the word loosely a lot of times, we say the word communion, and I, 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 you know, I know that probably we ought not say that word. We ought not call it communion. We ought to, uh, because we ought to constantly be in communion with the Lord. We ought not just wait to uh, one day a, a quarter or one day a year or one day. Uh, we ought to be in constant communion uh, with the Lord. But there's a, so uh, we're like, well, tonight we're going to call it the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Table. Uh, that's what a, a lot of folk and a lot of teachings in the Word of God says about that. The, there's a lot of false teaching about the Lord's Supper. There's a whole lot of false teaching about it and it's very, very prominent in the world today. And a lot of folk know about the Lord's Supper and a lot of folk know about, the, about this thing but, uh, but uh, they, they don't know what it represents and what's going on. One thing, uh, uh, one of the false teachings I, I find is, uh, is we know that, that, uh, that there's uh, uh, the, what the, the, the Roman Catholic Church, they would, uh, uh, they would take the body and or take the bread and, and they, when they eat of that bread, they think that that bread actually becomes the literal flesh of the Lord Jesus. Uh, and you know, when you ask a Catholic person, have you ever received Christ? And they'll say, yes, because they think they've received him when they've ate of his flesh. That's what they, do I? Right, they receive them every time they come together, every time they meet. Well, they got to. If that's him, I mean, if, if that, that's that physical part. If that's the way they receive him, just as soon as they get through indulging on it, and it's digested and passed, they don't have him anymore. Okay? Uh, so, uh, that's, uh, and I, you say, well, preacher, you oughtn't to go there. Well, I'm, I'm just telling you, showing you the foolishness in that doctrine. The foolishness in it. Because uh, uh, that, that bread is thought what is that, the transubstantiation or something like that they call it, I believe that's what they call that, that, that thing that, that at the moment that they put that bread, that cracker in their mouth that it becomes the literal flesh of Jesus in other words it's cannibalism that's what it is they also believe that the blood uh, that, that, that wine that they drink which is fermented that that wine actually turns into blood when they partake of it. 
So there's not only cannibalism, there's vampirism, if that's what you want to call it. Okay, they, they think that actually becomes because they're receiving Christ. And here's one thing, like Brother Joe just said, every time they come together, they do this. They don't have a service, what they don't get a cracker and some wine. And I don't know, I, I don't know, I'll never have observed it with them or nothing like that and wouldn't do it if I had the opportunity to, uh, because don't believe that uh, either. Uh, but but uh, I think it's a lot more to do with the priest getting to drink the wine than what it is anybody else, all right? Uh, and, but, and I believe that's a, a, a whole lot more to do with it there. But, but th there's a, a lot of untruths about the Lord's Supper, a lot of false teaching. Uh, there's a lot of truth about the Lord's Supper. And that is, it's the second ordinance of the church. So tonight what we're going to look at is the simple truth about the Lord's Supper. And we're going to look at about five, six things, I think, about the Lord's Supper. And we're going to be done pretty quickly here. This is something I teach every year. It's repetition. And I'll teach it now. Probably won't teach it again uh, when, when, in a couple of months when, before uh, we have the Lord's Supper and, and, and everything. But, uh, but the, let's look, number one, at the institution of the Lord's Supper. We just read this in Matthew 26, in verse number 26. The Bible said, and as they were eating, now they were in the midst of the Passover. Passover was being celebrated. Uh, and the, the, remember the Lord, remember we, we talked about that Passover a few Sunday mornings ago when we preached about the, the blood and the, and the offering of the blood and that Passover. The Lord commanded the children of Israel to, look, to observe that, that thing forever. That's what he said for them to do, to observe it forever. Now, uh, what, what happened, uh, the, the reason the children of Israel still observe it and we don't observe it is because they, their Messiah hadn't come yet, they don't think. They're still waiting on Messiah to come. And well, we know that the Messiah has already came. And he's already paid the price. He's already offered his blood. So they don't have to go through this thing anymore. Uh, but let's look at the institution. The Bible said, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it. And gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body. And he gave the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, uh, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now the Lord, what is the Lord's Supper? First of all, the institution of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is a, is a memorial service. That's basically what it is. It's remembering, what does it say on the front here of this, uh, of this communion table or offering to our Lord's Supper table, okay? We, do what? This do it in remembrance of who? Me. Me. That's what the Lord Jesus said. And we'll go there in just a minute uh, to another place where the, the Lord said that. Uh, and he, he told us uh, that we ought to, to do this. In, in other words, he said, this is a, it's a memorial. I want you to remember me when you do this. I want you to think about me when you, when you have this supper. I want it to remind you of me and what I went through and what I've done and what I paid for you. That's what the Lord's, that's what the Lord's Supper's all about. That's what it's all about. The, that broken bread, uh, that's depicting the broken body of Christ on Calvary. That cup uh, is depicting the shed blood of Christ on Calvary. And what the Lord's, uh, and matter of fact, in Luke 22, in verse 19 and 20 right there, somewhere right there, I believe it is that the Lord, that's where the Lord said right there, this do in remembrance of me. That's where he recorded. Do this or this do because you're remembering me when you do it. Now, it's more than just coming together and eating some, uh, some bread that none of us want to eat no other time and drinking a little grape juice. Uh, but it's observing and remembering that Christ paid, his, give, uh, give us his, give his life. He suffered. He offered his body for us. He offered his blood for us. So we see the institution, the reason for the Lord's Supper is because it's a memorial service. So, but let's look at the instructions, if you will, of the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And I'm going to begin to read with verse number 23. Uh, verse number 23. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11. There's a lot that we could read before we get here uh, to this particular place, but for sake of time tonight, I'm not going to read all that. Uh, these people were coming together. The church at Corinth was coming together. Uh, they were bringing potluck to the church house. They were sitting down and eating, and as they were doing that, they were calling it the Lord's Supper, and they wasn't sharing, and one would have, and the other wouldn't have, and, and they wouldn't have enough to eat. But the Bible said in verse number 23, for I've received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the, the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, what do you do? Ye do show the Lord's shoe, show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now I'm going to stop, well it's going down through verse 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened to the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So what we've read here is the, the instructions about the Lord's Supper. How do we carry out this memorial service? How is it to be observed? How, what do you do? Well, first of all, you look at the, we talked about the purpose, first of all, and we done mentioned that, but I want to tell you again, the purpose of the Lord's Supper is, is the part where he said in verses 24 and 25 there, this do in remembrance of me. It's not just a religious ritual, okay? And can I tell you this? To a lot of folk, that's what it's become. To a lot of folk, even Baptist folk, the Lord's Supper has just became a religious ritual. And they think that they don't think a whole lot about it. There's not very much preparation before they partake of it. And they just go and do it because it's a ritual for them to do. Matter of fact, the, what we hear amongst a, amongst a lot of our landmark brethren when it comes time for the Lord's Supper, and, I, and probably we've been, some of us have been guilty of that before this before too, make this, this statement. Well, when are we having feet washing? We put more emphasis on that that's not an ordinance than we do on what is an ordinance. Right. It lets us know where our, where our priorities are. Because, you know, that feet washing puts you, makes you the bride of Christ or, yeah. and, and foolishness like that. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to tell you that, that that's not going to happen. And I, even as much as I, I believe and I practice the feet washing, I practice it, I, I believe it. I, I, I am a feet washing Baptist uh, and I'm not a foot washing Baptist. I'm a feet washing Baptist. Okay, I got more than one foot and uh, I'm on, uh, we're going to do both of them. Uh, but, but here's the thing. It, that's not the ordinance. That's not the important part. That's not the part that God instituted and said, I'm commanding you. I'm not just, it's not, this here is not an option. I am commanding you, the church, that you observe, you do this, you remember me as long as you live. Every time you do it. Every time you do it. This is the ordinance that they give unto the church. Uh, it, it, this, this thing is, uh, is, is bigger. It's not just a religious ritual, it's, but, but neither is it a part of salvation. It's not part of salvation. You don't, get the, you don't get Jesus when you eat that bread. And you don't get Jesus when you drink that juice. But it's an act of remembrance. And a reflection upon the suffering death that Jesus went through. Remember, and when we take that, when we take that piece of bread, we ought to remember. We ought to remember, Brother Joe, those lashes that they put on his back. That's right. 
We all remember taking that crown of thorns and beating it into his brow when we take that piece of bread. That's what ought to come to our mind. And remember that God in heaven done, God allowed his son to do this for me. I had a, an old gentleman, he died, he's dead now. I, and I, I know I've told you this before in teaching on this, Brother Ken Whittington. I pastored Brother Ken at Bethel Hill Church and, and he blessed my heart. It come, it, it come the Lord's Supper time and, and Brother Ken sat over here on the end and they, they, they'd pass that deacon would take that plate down there and Brother Dean before he'd, he'd get on his knees, bro, brother, he's an older gentleman, he'd get on his knees and he'd reach in that plate and get that bread, tears running down his face as he took that piece of bread and he'd wait for us to, he'd stay there on his knees until he got there, let's say, let's eat and he'd put it in his mouth. Brother Michael crying like a baby. I mean just he was very reverent in it. It meant something to him. It meant something to him. It's more than just a piece of bread. But it was, he remembered what Jesus done so he could do that. He remembered, he was remembering what Jesus done so he could, so he could enjoy and take part of this supper that the Lord said, do it in remembrance of me. This, 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 uh, this, time of that we have called the Lord's Supper it's uh, we remember his suffering we we, uh, we remember that he he give his all for us uh, let's look at the products used in the Lord's Supper first thing I want you to notice I want to, I want to tell you this and I, I'm going to prove to you in just a moment because there's a lot of false teaching I mean, I'm even hearing about it amongst Baptist folk today that saying that, that the, the, the fruit of the vine that we use during the Lord's Supper is they, they're actually using wine, fermented wine. Mm -hmm. And they said that's what the Lord used. Well, I'm going to just differ with you. Right. I'm just going to differ with that. I don't believe that. As a matter of fact, I think that's pretty foolish to think that. Why? Preacher, why is that? Because if the Lord God, if the Lord Jesus Christ is the Word, don't, don't the Bible say He is the Word? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14 it said, In what? The Word was what? Made flesh and dwelt among us. That being Jesus Christ. Well, if Jesus Christ, Brother Joe, is the Word, Jesus Christ Himself said in Proverbs 20 and verse 1, that wine is a mocker, and strong drink is raging. And whosoever is not deceived, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So this should elim eliminate any thought in our mind that Jesus had fermented fruit, fruit of the vine for the supper. There's no way that he would have beguiled or went against anything. You know what? Matter of fact, in order to ferment anything, it has to be tainted with something. Fermented fruit of the vine, fermented grape juice has to be tainted with something. And my, the blood of the Lord Jesus wasn't tainted. It was pure, brother. It was able to take away the sin of the world. It was pure blood. I mean, I mean precious blood. I mean sinless blood. So anything that leaveneth, Leaven always equals what? In, in the Word of God, it always speaks of sin. And friend, I'm telling you tonight that, that the Lord didn't use, uh, he, he didn't use fermented wine. He used unfer unfermented fruit of the vine. That's what, he, that's what he done when he produced the products that was used during the Lord's Supper. Not only is there unfermented fruit of the vine, but there's unleavened bread. This unleavened bread that we talk about, that it speaks of the sinless life of Christ. Unleavened, unleavening. There was no sin there. It was pure. Uh, it was uh, sinless. It was, uh, there was n nothing that tainted, again, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and his life. Perfect, above, re above reproach. He was perfect, the, the Son of God. So this speaks of the, of the sinless life of Christ. Let's look at number three and the preparation for the Lord's Supper. Now, 
In preparing for the Lord's Supper, there's three looks to take before taking the Lord's Supper. There's three looks that we ought to take. First of all, we ought to look backwards. I didn't mention that. We ought to look backwards. We ought to look back at what Jesus suffered. We ought to look back at what Jesus did. We ought to remind, we ought to remind ourselves that he suffered and bled and died. It ought, it ought to mean that, that to us when we, when we come and, and observe that thing here in a, a month or so. When we come to do that, we ought to, we, we ought to take it to heart and say, boy, and this is what Jesus did. So we ought to look backwards at what Jesus did. Uh, number two, we ought to look forward. And that is to his second coming. Matthew 26 and verse 29, uh, he said this. He said, I will not drink hereafter of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So he's saying, not only do you look back and remember what I did, but I want you to look ahead and remember what we're going to do here one day. One day before long, we're going to we're going to sit down at my father's table and we're going to sup together again. And well, that ought to cause us to look ahead and to think. But, but not only do we look behind and, or look backwards and look forward, but we ought to look inward. And this is probably the, uh, one of the greatest places we need to look. Look inward. That means that we had to examine ourselves. Now, verses 28 and 29 of 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, let's look here just a minute. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, when you hear these scripture, when you think of this, there's a lot of folk that take this so out of context and say, well, I'm not worthy to eat the Lord, to, to, to have the Lord. And, and can, we, can I tell you all this? You're exactly right. There's not a one of us that's worthy to receive what the Lord done for us. But he didn't say that we had to be worthy. But he said if you eat it or drink it unworthy, unworthily, if you look up that word unworthily, that word unworthily means irreverently. It means not pay. Listen to what he said. Ethan drank a damnation to himself. And he tells you he finishes this thing. He says not discerning the Lord's body. Now I've heard preachers uh, read that and say, he says not deserving the Lord's body. That ain't what he said. That, that says, in your King James Bible, look at it and tell me, if it says deserving, then throw it away because it's not the right Bible. Okay? It does not say deserving. It says discerning. And to discern something, that word comes from the, uh, from the Greek, that word is diakrino, means to understand. Not understanding what the Lord went through for you. Not understanding the suffering that Christ went through. Not understand. That's what he's saying. Now, I've, I've, I've been in, in the Lord's Supper before, and I've seen people partake of the Lord's Supper, Brother Michael, very irreverently. Very, very irreverently. They would think they'd be laughing and picking and carrying on and, and, and go to chewing the most time that bread. It's going, when you put it in your mouth, what's it going to do? Everybody's going to eat it at the same time. It's going to crack and crunch. And, and <laughs> they thought that's the funniest thing in the world. They can eat Fritos all day long and never get tickled, you know. But, but that just somehow or another, that just tickles them to death. And, and that's really, that's irreverent. That's, that's not. But you ought to, we, ought to, we ought to partake of this thing knowing what the Lord has went through for us. He said, for this cause, in verse number 30, many are weak and sickly among you. And many sleep. So when we talk about looking inward, that means that you examine yourself. You examine yourself. Somebody said, preacher, you tell me to examine myself and I find out, you know what the biggest cop out is when it comes to the Lord's Supper, Brother Michael? And I don't know how it was where you come from, but here you can have folk come to church all year long, be faithful as clockwork, have the, have, have the Lord's Supper and they, they want to take out because they say, oh, I ain't worthy to eat that. I ain't worthy. You know what? Y'all are get worthy. 
Right. Y'all to get worthy. If that's what you're getting, what you're looking at, y'all to get to the place where that you see that you're never going to add up to be enough to say I'm worth what Jesus did. But it's not about you being worth what Jesus did. It's about you looking at Him and saying, "Whoa, I must have been enough to Him. Right. I must have been enough for Him." Because he died for me. And I'm going to partake of this bread. And I'm going to remember what he done to purchase my fallen soul. And I'm going to take of this cup and remember that precious blood that he shed for me on Calvary. It's not about living up to a certain thing. Examine yourself. Make sure, number one, you're saved. Don't partake of it. And make sure you're saved. Has any lost people ever partook of it? Sure they have. Sure they have. But there's some folks that's partaken of it that's been done it very irreverently. And, and Paul said because of this that there's many that are weak and are sickly among you. And he said there's many that sleep. He said there's some even dead because they've done this thing like this. The number four, let's look at the period of the Lord's Supper. Now there's no certain time to have the Lord's table. But Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 25, he said, as oft as you drink it. Now, as oft as you drink it. I had a gentleman that used to come to church here, he used to tell me we didn't have enough. And uh, he had Catholic roots and I said, well, how much is enough? Well, you ought to have at least once a month. And I said, no. I ain't doing that. Uh, why is that, preacher? Because it, sometimes it loses the meaning. You do it so often that it becomes ritual instead of relationship. Now, I'm not saying that we, that we, can't, we can't have it more than once a, a year. But we can. We do it once a year right now. Right the Saturday night before Easter Sunday. That's when we do it. No particular reason. That's not when Jesus did it. Okay. But that's just when we, that's just what, what, what the time we do it. Okay. And uh, that's just the way things are. And I, I don't want you to think that there's a certain time. Well, well we've got to do it this Saturday night before. Well, that we do, we, you had not got to do it then. Okay. We can do it the first Sunday of the new year. All right, we can. We, if that's what we decide we're going to do. There's no, what I'm telling you is there's no certain time. Okay? Uh, there's, no, there's no certain time just as often as you do it. As often as you do it, I want you to remember me. Whenever you do it, I want you to remember me. Whenever you do it, if it's often, if it's not very, I know some churches don't hardly ever have, don't have, don't have it in years. Really, I'm serious. I believe you ought to have it. Okay? <laughs> But, the, but the, every church is, is that's, that's left up to the church itself, the pastor, how they want to do that. So, but I do believe this. I don't believe it needs to be done so often that it becomes ritual rather than a commandment. But it should, uh, we, but should observe it enough that we stay familiar with its meaning. Right. We ought to stay familiar with what it means. The number five, let's look at the participants. And this is where... Somebody falls off the boat here and there. The participants of the Lord's Supper. I'm not asking everybody to agree with me. But I'm just telling you how it's done here. Okay? And when you start pastoring here, you do it the way you want to. But while I'm pastoring here, we're going to do it this way. Okay? And that is, I believe it's the ordinance. Who is that ordinance? That ordinance is given to who? The church. First of all, Say, folk, observe the Lord's Supper. First of all, say, folks, what observe it. It's not given to the world. And let me say this. I don't believe you ought to open it up to the world. All right? I don't believe you ought to open it up to the world. Now, let me say this. There's no person or group or family that has the right to observe the Lord's Supper Apart from the church. You hear what I'm saying? Well, we make unleavened bread and we're going to have it at the house. 
Do it if you want to, but it's not the Lord's Supper. It's given to the church. All right? It's, it, that, that's, that's whom the Lord commissioned and ordained to observe this supper. The local church. I believe saved folk observe it, and I believe it's for the local church. Every church can have liberty to do as they please. But my conviction rests on the fact that it's given to the local church. That's who the Lord gave, who He's speaking to. I've often thought about this, and I'm not asking you to, to agree, but I, I've often thought about how many folk were, were, were there at the, at the, uh, on, on, the, on the Mount of Olives when the Lord was ascended into heaven. If I ain't mistaken, I believe somebody said there was, a, I believe one of the writers said it was above 500, wasn't he? Something like, wasn't there above 500 that was there? That, Paul, yeah, Paul said that. And, and uh, so, they, them folk must have been, I don't believe the Lord would just appear to anybody. He didn't. He appeared to those that were saved. That's who he, that's who he appeared to. But when he instituted that supper, there was 11 that were there that partook. Well, you say there's 12 there. As well counting Jesus it was. Judas didn't partake of it. Why? Because he wasn't, he wasn't saved. The Lord told him to get on. That thou doest do quickly. So I, I, I look at this. Now, there's churches, there's brethren that I fellowship with and I love. That in the church they pastor, they open it up to what they call close. Anybody of like faith and order, they have, they, they, they'll, they'll open it up to. And they'll say, y'all can partake of it. We, uh, the, the, the whole, uh, Jimmy, the whole landmark work, most of them's that way. I mean, they, they call it, they have, have, they say we open up to, they say they close communion, but they'll, I've seen them get on the phone and go to calling their calling folks. Hey, y'all want to come have communion with us tonight? No, you don't do that. You don't do that. That's not right. You ought to have the Lord's Supper, and I believe it's for the local church. And that's the way it is here. You say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean that you need to be a member. If you're going to observe the Lord's Supper here, you're going to be a member here. You're going to be a member here. And I don't mean you say you're going to hurt folks' feelings. No, nope. not going to hurt folks' feelings. Why is that? How come you ain't going to hurt their feelings? Because we're going to have it on a night when we ain't got to hurt their feelings. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have it on Saturday night before Easter Sunday. Church is going to come together and we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. Somebody said, well, preacher, I want, to, I want to have it. Are you saved? Well, yeah, I'm saved. Are you a member of the church? Well, well, if you're a member of the church, you ought, if, you, if, you, if you're saved, you ought to be a member of the church. Right. Amen. You ought to be. That's where God gets glory from. He gets glory in our life through the Ephesians 3.21. That's where God gets glory at. He, he, he paid the price for, for mankind, but he, listen, he, he, the Bible said the husbands love your wives even as Christ loved what? The church. I'm telling you what, the church is important to God. It's important. It ought to be important to us. It's important to be numbered with the church. It's important to be numbered. I'm done. I'm through with that tonight. I don't know you say, preacher, that's kind of uh, cut and dried, ain't it? It is for me.